Hello and welcome to Dawatan. It's a weekly podcast that brings you human rights stories from Myanmar. It's brought to you by Frontier Myanmar in association with Fondation Hirondelle. This week on Dawatan, we follow the case of a local reporter. He's been detained by the military and charged. He's one of many Myanmar people now trying to navigate their way through a legal system that has radically changed since the military seized power on February the 1st. Detainees are now routinely denied access to lawyers, and there have been wholesale changes to the laws that protect citizens following arrest and detention, including legal aid. This story is by journalists from Frontier Myanmar. On May 26 will be the sixth court hearing that Ko Wong Kyo will attend. He will be making the final summation of his case alone, without his defence lawyer. He's already had two court hearings without a lawyer. Kyo is a local reporter for the Democratic Voice of Burma, or DVB. They're a popular independent television and online media outlet established by Myanmar expatriates living in Norway. He was violently arrested on the night of March 1 by security forces and charged under Section 505 of the Penal Code. It's a law that's being used widely by the military to persecute people. Section 505 can be used to charge any person who is accused of showing the military in a bad light. On March 1, security forces arrived in six military vehicles. They cut off the electricity and targeted Ko Ong Kyo's house, firing grenades and objects as they broke into the house. Ko Ong Kyo was denied the opportunity to answer questions following the arrest. He was later barred from seeking assistance from a lawyer, according to his wife, Ma Nei Chi. <laughs> Since Kuangjo's arrest on March 1, I have tried to hire two lawyers. I have been hiring a lawyer since he was sued under Section 505 of the Penal Code. It was easy to hire lawyers as they had not been threatened on March 1. Later, as the military gradually tightened its grip on the lawyers, they no longer wanted to go to prison courts, and I can't contact the lawyers anymore at the moment. Mani Chi told Dovatan that lawyers in Miek and Dawai were subject to intimidation outside the courts. The police and military confiscated information from lawyers involved in the anti-coup protest and forced the lawyers to plead guilty under Section 505 of the Penal Code. From March 13 to April 27, Mani Chi lost all contact with her husband. <laughs> By the time Kuang Zhou and I got back in touch, he had two court hearings. We couldn't submit a power of attorney for Kuang Zhou, who has to defend himself from the fourth court hearing. He is not a criminal. As a media person, he has asked the judge to rule in accordance with the media law. What the judge said at the third court hearing was that Kuang Zhou was charged under Section 505 of the Penal Code only, and the verdict will not be based on the media law. Ko Wang Kyo will be tried in his seventh court hearing. He's not alone in finding it difficult to get a lawyer to represent him. Ko Wai Monyang is a prominent protest leader. He was arrested during a public rally in Moniwa on April 15. His lawyer is on the run and in hiding. The lawyer was told he would face charges under Section 505 of the Penal Code if he pursued a political case. According to the Moniwa Strike Committee, some lawyers in Moniwa who represented student protesters were threatened with prosecution and had to go into hiding. Doatan spoke with some lawyers in Mandalay about their current situation. They told us they had not been directly threatened, but they do have to be very careful with how they word questions in court. This is a problem that should be asked, but there are some questions that cannot be asked for fear of violating the law. As of May 19, Myanmar's new military dictatorship has arrested more than 5,000 people and detained over 4,000. 94 people are known to have received jail sentences. The military courts have sentenced some people in absentia, 
and have issued arrest warrants for over 1,700 people. Police and the military, working together to enforce the coup, have been making arrests since February 1, often in violation of the law. Certain sections of the law that protect the privacy of citizens have been suspended, and now anyone can be detained for more than 24 hours without an arrest warrant. The military has also added a guest list clause in the ward and village law. It requires all households to register the name of every person visiting them with the local administrator. This law is now being used to arrest protesters. So far, the military has amended 29 laws to maintain power and suppress pro-democracy voices. The military has further deprived detainees of their rights while in prison. In some cases, courts have been moved to prisons and detainees from townships under martial law are being tried in prison without a lawyer being allowed. The State Administration Council amended the legal aid law on 29th of April, repealing Article 3E, which is the essence of the law. The purpose of Article E was to reduce unnecessary detentions in police custody and prisons during criminal investigations and to stop illegal detentions. In total, 10 sections of the law were repealed and 22 sections were replaced. U Ki Mint is the chairman of the Myanmar Lawyers Network. In the past, once a person was arrested, you could ask for help, but now you cannot. Once a person has been arrested and imprisoned, they have no right to appeal. In addition, the legal aid group has the right to ask for help from the concerned department. Departmental officials are responsible for assisting the legal aid team. Now, there is no need to ask for help because the coup army has deleted those articles. Worst of all, the coup regime has banned the training of free lawyers for the people. Therefore, I would like to say that all the laws amended during the military dictatorship were done in accordance with the military dictatorship, which causes great harm to the people. Under the 2016 legal aid law, legal aid groups were formed from the local union level to the township level. The groups provided free legal services to anyone who has the right to seek legal assistance, such as women and children who are accused of a crime and lack money. However, under the amended law, legal aid can no longer be provided to stateless people, asylum seekers, migrants and refugees. All existing legal aid groups were suspended on May 11th and are now required to form new members under the amended law. U Nyanwen, a senior NLD figure and chairman of the legal aid board, has also been detained. For the people in Myanmar, access to justice, a fundamental right, is becoming increasingly difficult. For Ma Nei Chi, the wife of Ko Ang Kyo, Faith in the rule of law has been destroyed. There is no rule of law in Myanmar. At the next seventh court hearing, I do not believe what the judge says. Even if Guangzhou is imprisoned, I will not appeal at all, because I no longer trust the law in Myanmar. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Doha Tan. You can listen to our podcast via Frontier Myanmar's website and Facebook page and also our Doha Tan Facebook page. Our podcast can be found on SoundCloud, YouTube and iTunes. You can also listen every Saturday night from 9 till 10 p.m. and Sunday morning 6 till 7 a.m. on Voice of America Radio. The project to support human rights reporting is a partnership between Frontier Myanmar and Fondation Hirondel and it's made with the support of our donors. Thanks for staying with us while broadcasting. Have a good day.